guys, I know that the plumbing school stocks are going up. But before you are about to drop $15,000 on a plumbing training program so you can make $76,000 a year with the risk of being disfigured because of an incident and before you are about to crawl into cramped spaces carrying heavy accessories like bathtubs and fucking up your back forever, please give Cody one more shot. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to become a web developer in 90 days. This is the second time I'm attempting making this video because I recorded the first one with my shitty uh, MacBook microphone. And uh, yeah, please, before you are about to start uh, a plumbing school, please watch this video, implement the stuff that I'm gonna show you here, so you can make $113,000 a year as an average developer. Obviously, you can make more, 200, 300,000, but that's up to you. And obviously, no, uh, no guarantees, okay, because it's up to you. But yeah, let's get into it. I actually made this roadmap and I did it like step by step with you. Uh, but as I said, I had to drop the video because the audio was horrible. Now, let me actually show you what I did here. So I have created this like to-do list, if you may. And all you have to do is, as you start working on stuff, you move the thing from not started to in progress to done. And I'm gonna leave this uh, notion once this video gets 50 comments, okay? And yeah, let me actually get into it and show you like pretty much what you have to learn. So. We have the HTML and CSS, and this is pretty much the most important thing that you should know as a web developer. It's not the most valuable thing that you should know as a web developer, but it's one of those things that if you don't know, uh, you are gonna be a sucker forever. So this is the Apple website without CSS. So this is like just plain HTML. I know it looks like a bootcamp graduate portfolio, but it's not, it's actually the Apple website. And when you learn CSS and when you apply CSS to HTML, then this website is gonna look like this, okay? So way, way different. In fact, I'm gonna show you what my beginner students that are just starting out are making. And this is one from one of my students, Miwara. This is made last year. I think she had some experience, but Tony, she was a brand new developer and I think in a week or two she made this, okay? So this is extremely possible and in this roadmap I left some resources and I said you should learn how to code or you should start learning how to code on this website called CodePen. It looks like this. So you don't have to install, you know, VS Code, you don't have to install any IDE, you can literally do this right away and the only thing that you should focus on as a beginner is writing code and this platform CodePen, which is free, is gonna help you out. This is where I started my career from. I wrote so much code on CodePen. It's, uh, you know, it, it's the best platform for you to start learning how to code, okay? So that's that. And I left some resources for you over here. So you just click on this and you'll know exactly what HTML tags you should learn because there are 140, if I believe so, but there are only like 10 that you should know and with those 10, you can make pretty much anything. Then we have CSS. And again, I left some uh, properties that you should know, like padding, like margin, like border, like width, height, font size, font weight, color, and background. If you know this, you are good to go. You can pretty much build anything you want. And then on top of that, if you add flex, I know some people say grid is better. I personally never use grid. I don't like grid. I don't care about grid. I can do everything with flex. Maybe I'm ignorant, but I'm also the type of guy that is trying to learn as little tech as possible and be as productive as possible. And flex helps me do exactly that. You all, all you need to do is learn a few properties like justify content, align items, flex direction and flex wrap. And then you can also make something like this, okay? Again, you can uh, go into my community, just go to school.com slash developer pro, and then you can search Apple, I think, and then you can see what my students are making. Uh, it's gonna be incredible what you see, and then when you compare what my students are making with 
free code camp or code academy or like Udemy courses. It's actually unbelievable. There with JavaScript, we have a few courses that you need to learn and be really good at it. We have variables, we have data types uh, such as strings and numbers and booleans. These are called primitive. Then we have control flow, if else statements. If something is, you know, true, do this. If something is false, do other things or other things. So for example, if side panel open equals true, show the side panel, else close it. You know, that's pretty much how it works. Very, very simple stuff. Then we have functions, then we have objects, and we have arrays. These are data types as well. They are not primitives, they are called non-primitives. And I'm gonna show you how this work, how this, yeah, this work. Uh, it's actually super simple again. Let's look at this. So this is an object, this whole thing is an object, and this object has different properties assigned to it, like status, like assign, or like done, which by the way, this is a Boolean. And then we have text. This creates an object. So for example, you are an object because you have a name, you have a nationality, you have a, you have a height, you have an age. What else do you have? Race, you have a religion, uh, I don't know, uh, a weight, you have a body fat percentage, all those properties define you. Imagine like a DNA, right? That's an object. And then we have, by the way, I'm sorry for the way I speak. Uh, I have sinusitis and it's pretty bad. I have to go and get surgery. So that's why I am running out of uh, words, you know, because I cannot be breathed properly. Then we have arrays and arrays are pretty much uh, lists of things. So if you look at this, what do we have here? We have a list and then we have a list of objects. Okay. If you look at everything in this way, your life is going to be way simpler. Let's look at this. This is an array, right? We have a list and each one of these posts uh, post is an object. So we have an array of objects. If we open, I don't know, this one, this object has an array of comments and then each comment is an object. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's how that works. Then we have loops. Loops are important because uh, they help us go through data. So because you're extremely smart, you can just look at this list. And if I say, hey, find the functions card, you'll be able to just have a glance and then you'll finally find the functions in the middle, right? But as a, as a computer, you cannot do that. So you have to go through each element one by one and check if this card is equal to functions. If not, go to the next one. And with loops, we can actually do that. So we'll check, is this the one? Is the first one? Is the first card uh, the functions one? No. Is the second one? No. Is the third one? No. Is the fourth one? Yes. Okay, so we found it. So we have to use loops for that. And then you have to start building apps. And for the building apps part, uh, what I did is in the description of this video, there is a Gumroad link where you can download the uh, roadmap of applications that my students are building. Uh, I give it away for free now. I might make it $50 later so I can make some cash so I can buy coffee. Coffee is not free. Also need to pay for sinusitis uh, treatments. So... Yeah, grab it now while it's free. Then you should learn React. Uh, when it comes to React, you should know components, you should know props, you should know state, you should know map, filter, and reduce, okay? This really is what separates noobs from pros, okay? Very, very important. I've seen so many people that ignore this or ignore JavaScript and jump straight into React and they will absolutely have a hell of a life. I would say worse than being a plumber, okay? I mean, it's not worse because you ha don't have to cram into tight spaces, but whatever, you get the point, right? Uh, and you should also learn how to use React with classes. So if you are, you are, if you are fortunate enough, you'll find a teacher that still teaches classes like me uh, because right now everyone is using this thing called hooks, right? Uh, and hooks are great. But do you know why I know hooks are great? Because I know how it is to write classes, okay? If I ask you, hey, have you, uh, have you ever tried the uh, sarmale, which is like a Romanian dish that we eat for Christmas, and not only, but mainly for Christmas, you'll say no. But do you know if sarmale are better than, I don't know, hot dogs? Hell no, because you never tried it, right? So how can you say that hooks are better 
or you like hooks if you've never tried classes. So you need to know classes and hooks. Let me just put here hooks as well. Hooks, and I would say custom hooks as well, by the way. Uh, you should know that by using classes because you might end up having a job where you have to know classes. And if you don't know how to use classes, then you'll struggle. Okay, so you should learn classes, then you can learn hooks. Then you should also learn how to make API calls and a thing called promises. And most people teach you that, I don't know, somewhere here, in my opinion, you should learn that very, very far down the road, once you understand the logic of JavaScript, once you understand the logic of React, because everything has to come together when you're ready. You don't wanna undercook uh, a cake. You wanna do it, you wanna time everything properly. And in my opinion, you should learn how to make API calls very, very late into your career. Then you should also learn context. And if you are using plain vanilla React, you should also learn uh, something called routing, okay? And I, re I recommend React Router DOM. That's my opinion. Uh, feel free to shit on me on, in the comments. I'm gonna take that and I'm not gonna be upset with you if you do that. Then you should also learn the skill of reading the docs because at some point in your career, you're not gonna be given YouTube tutorials, okay? So you'll get a job and you know what? <laughs> Jobs will not give you a course. You'll have to learn how to read the docs. It's pretty much the most important skill because sometimes you have to do it. Then you should learn TypeScript uh, if you want. I think you should. Then you should learn VS Code, which is another skill because using a code editor is a skill in itself. You should learn how to search for things. You should take some time out of the day to learn shortcuts and whatnot. You should learn how to use your VS Code, your editor. This is the most popular one. I like it. I've been using it for seven, eight years at this point. Uh, it's very reliable. You can install a lot of shit into it and it's kind of make you very productive. Then you should learn Git. See how far in the course I teach Git or in the roadmap I teach you Git because you don't need Git till this point. You don't need it. I've been looking at this uh, platform called Code Academy and they teach you Git from day one, which in my opinion, it's an absolute disaster. Why would a beginner need to use Git? Like it doesn't make any sense. Uh, in my program, if we look at this, uh, they are learning Git here when they are building this app called the Crypto App. Okay, and then I teach them how to use Git like at work. Okay, because it's not just Git add, Git commit, Git push. If you have some experience with Git, it's not just that. You need to learn how to create branches. You need to learn how to, you know, uh, compartmentize your work how to split your work into chunks, okay? Uh, and I think I left here for you uh, a to-do app, which is gonna teach you how to break down your application. This is one of my students, Daniel, you saw him probably in live streams and whatnot. This is his app. Uh, this would be classified as a portfolio app, but in my program, we don't do a portfolio app. We just have a resume with work experience on it. But this is way better, in my opinion, than any boot camper that I've seen so far. And again, like getting shit done properly, it's a skill that you need to learn, okay? Otherwise, nobody's gonna put up with you, especially in this economy and any other future economy. Nobody wants to teach you how to use Git or how to do your job properly. They expect you to know how to do your job properly from day one, okay? Then deployments. You should uh, use this platform called Vercel and you should pay for pro version. You should also buy a domain. It's like $5. So you don't have coinwave.vercel.com or some bullshit like that. You have your own domain. It shows you that you have, that you are proactive and you learn how to do this stuff properly. Then you should learn XJS. All these are skill that, skills that you should learn when you're building an app like this, like a slightly bigger application. And this app is not perfect, but is way better than uh, any of my students' competitors, okay? Then Node.js, if you wanna learn how to make servers, uh, it's up to you if you wanna learn Node.js or not, you can learn another language, I don't care. The only thing that I care about is for you to learn how to create software 
and I don't care if you are using JavaScript without TypeScript, I don't care about that, I don't care if you are using Java, I don't care if you are using Python, I don't care if you are using C++, C Sharp, whatever, I don't really care about any of that. The only thing that I care about is, can you build software that solves a problem? If yes, then you are a savage and you deserve a job and you will get a job, okay? The database I personally use for my, my SAS MongoDB. I don't know if I spell correctly Postgres or not, uh, but in my team project, uh, we are migrating from MongoDB to Postgres. Uh, so you can choose any of these, or you can use my MySQL, or you can use whatever database you want. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, because the only thing that matters is can you build software that is good, okay? And just give this a shot, else you can go back to the plumbing school. And as I said, this is going to take you 90 days, okay? And let me tell you about how you do this in 90 days. So I bought my simulator in March, so that's like seven months ago. And I looked at my stats, how much have I played my simulator. I played like 25 hours, okay, since March. So seven months passed and I played 25 hours. Now, in 90 days, we have... 2,160 hours, and assuming you'll be learning how to code and coding four hours a day, that's going to take you 540 days, and if we divide this by 365, then we have 1.5 years. So in one year and a half, you'll be able to do this whole thing, okay? You can do it faster, obviously. Uh, but this is something realistic. So in 90 days, you can actually become a web developer. It's very straightforward. And you can actually work with a trackpad, <laughs> with a keyboard, with a microphone, with an Apple Studio display, with a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, whatever you decide, from the comfort of your home, with your aircon on, or you can go to Bali or Thailand or whatever. You don't have to cram into tight spaces, okay? You don't need to be in extreme heat or cold. It takes some time to be good at something. Do not come to me, okay, with portfolios that look like this, okay, and expecting to make any money whatsoever, right? Compare this with a student of mine. <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> if you look at it like this, right? Do not complain. Think about how can you get good at this stuff. Get good at it. Shut the fuck up. Do the work. Apply. Network. Get your LinkedIn together. Uh, get your resume together. Build something useful. Then start complaining. Okay? If that doesn't work, then start complaining. In fact, don't even complain. Think about why people don't want you. But if you follow this process that I explained you here and you really build something good, something useful, you'll get paid. As simple as. If you want me to help you, that's the first link in the description. If you want to check out my coding program uh, and learn from me, that's going to be the second link in the description. You can check out the program, but please do not hit uh, join because I'm going to have to decline you. And I don't really like doing that, okay? Uh, so that's pretty much it. I hope you like this video. Again, if this video gets 50 comments, I'm gonna drop this roadmap that has resources and whatnot. I wish you a great day and I'm sorry for my voice. I have sinusitis and I'm sick. Please forgive me. Bye.